and five, four, three, two, one, go. In the Hockey House Game of the Week. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome inside the broadcast at your heart nice arena. I'm Michael Rosenkranz, joined alongside my broadcast partner and great buddy, Derek Seam. Derek Seam, you got the job done last night, defeating the Buckeyes 4 nothing. thanks to a great performance from Zoe Dorn. She gets her first career start, first career shutout, and Kylie Del Rey notching a hat trick. What does Central Michigan need to do to get this week here today? Oh, Michael, I think it really starts from the four check. We've talked a lot about the top line for CMU. Very good job once again last night. Two assists for Ky or for um, Caitlin Williams, Gabriella Nixon getting an assist, Annie Castor getting a goal for CMU. And then we mentioned it, the hat trick for Kylie Delray. Something I want to see for CMU, though, is I want to start seeing more of the second, the third, and the fourth line game more active, getting more active in the four check. So that's one thing that's important for me today. Another thing is goalie play. We, as, as you mentioned it, it was a really good goal. Really goal. It was a really, really good game really by really Zoe Lawrence, Lawrence yesterday. It's going to be Bree Schroer in that tonight. So I'm really excited to see what Schroer can do in her first game here at Marty since mid November. You know, Michael, I thought we had a quick turnaround with the 12 hour turnaround that we had from last night to tonight, leaving Harnett at about 10 o'clock last night, getting here at about 10.30 this morning. Man, man, man. getting going late, 9 o'clock last night from Bowling Green and Loyola, and then you get done at the rink at about kind of midnight, 12.30 in the morning, you get up get bread and early and to the rink by 7.30. So, 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 good, so, good, good, so, That turnaround, that turnaround. Exactly. Notre Dame at Northern Michigan should be going on right now. That face-off was at 11. Take a look at more ACHAW2 games later today. Pitt's taking on Oswego State at 3 o'clock. That face-off will be there. Rowan at Villanova already going on at 11 this morning. And Dakota Botno at Pat. North Dakota North, State. North, 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 North Dakota State. State. I couldn't remember the readout, the abbreviation. No, you're so, good. So, you're good. You're good. <laughs> But you know the game that's really excited, that I'm really excited for it's that Rowan and Villanova game. Both teams coming in in the Southeast region. Villanova coming off a really impressive game or really impressive season last year, being the number one seed to go in the pool play at the national tournament. Ended up getting upset by Dakota Botno, who made it to out of pool play. They ended up playing um, Sioux College in the national semifinals. Sioux College going on to win the national championship. But I'm really excited to see what Villanova can do down the stretch, try to get back into the national tournament, and get a low measure of revenge going into March. To see if they can punch their ticket to Nashville. We'll step aside really quickly and we'll take a look at each of these teams more in action when we return. You're watching CMU Women's Hockey on CCH.
Back inside Martin Ice Arena. We apologize for the control of the technical difficulty. A little bit of echo echoing on our end, but got it resolved now, and we are back as both teams have just skated on, out, out onto the ice for warm-ups. Let's take a look at these teams a little bit more in depth. Central Michigan, again, notching their 12th victory of the season. They sit at 12-5-0-0. 24 points tied for second in the CCWHA Central Division. They're coming off of a 4-0 win versus Ohio State last night. And again, Derek, we stressed this much last night. This team, they cannot shut down in the second semester. Yeah, Michael, this is a team last year that really struggled down the stretch in the second semester. Only winning two games, one against Lawrence Second and one against Miami of Ohio. Only one of those games coming right in this building, that being the first Miami of Ohio game. So this is a Central Michigan team, or Ryan, I am so sorry, Michael, that I would argue is hungry. They still have that bad taste in their mouth from Nationals, from the CCWHA tournament last season. So I'm excited to see what they can do down the stretch. Since the Sioux College series, CMU has been outscoring their opponents 23 to 9. The rest of their games for Central Michigan are at home, minus the Adrian series, which you'll have one home game for that. And I think that's a really important stat for CMU is that they're playing a lot of their games right here on this ring. This is a team that this year has struggled traveling. We have seen it. We have seen a lot of their series either end in a sweep or end in a split. We got. We can talk about Sioux College. We can talk about Aurora from last weekend. Go to MSU. We lost the game at MSU and then came back the next night and won at home against Michigan State. Same with Florida Tech. Went down to Farmington Hills Ice Arena. Lost down there. Came back the next day. It was able to beat Lawrence Tech. So this is a team that it's a huge advantage when they're able to play at home this season. One thing that the Central Michigan team has done a lot and just mentioning about those games is rebound as well. How do you respond to the loss a night ago, to the losses that those nights ago and picking up the win next, next time. And Central Michigan last night did a great job in responding to that loss to a trust and beating Ohio State, giving them their first loss of the regular season. And speaking of the Buckeyes, they come in at 8 1 0 0, 16 points. They are third in the CHE. This is a team, though, Derek, have not given up more than three goals this season, except for last night. This was the first time this season that the Buckeyes have allowed more than three goals. Yeah, this is a really good back check for Ohio State. We really saw it. They have some really good defensemen in Savannah Sip, their goalie. Holy smokes, some of the saves she makes are just incredible. So I'm really excited to see how she can rebound and overall how this Buckeyes team can rebound from last night. This is the third game in three consecutive days for the Buckeyes. And how do you think for both of these teams? We saw it a little bit with Central Michigan last night near that third period. The team might have been just setting in a little bit for both these teams. And for particularly Ohio State, third game in three consecutive days, how did they get the energy back tonight? Yeah, and I really think CMU is at the advantage here because you mentioned it, the playing the three games in three days, Ohio State doesn't scratch a lot of players. So if you make this road trip with Ohio State, there's a highly, highly, highly likely play or chance you're dressing if you're playing all three games. And then you factor in the bus ride up here. They had to take the bus ride from Columbus up to Mount Pleasant yesterday after playing West Virginia Friday night. And then you go into the hotel last night. You're finally able to relax, able to regroup. And then coming up bright and early for the 12 o'clock puck drop. So I'm excited to see how they rebound. And I think this will give CMU an advantage. And something I want to see from them is being able to use their speed to their advantage. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is game two in this all-time series. Central Michigan and Ohio State last night met for the first time in program history. CMU, of course, leads the series 1-0 after their 4-0 win. Taking a look at some impact players for Central Michigan, starting off with Tate Hutchinson. Her 16 games played, one goal, six assists. What can you tell me about her, Darren? Yeah. I've, what I've really liked about Kate Hutchinson is the amount she has grown and improved throughout the season. They rave about Hutchinson. They just cannot stop talking about how much she's improved and how well of a defenseman she's developed into. The second part, I, or second key I have to her is going, she's going to be all over the ice, both offensively and defensively. I know last night when I had the call with you, Michael, 
I must have said her name about 10, 15 times. Just that's the type of player she's going to be. She's going to be all over the place. And she's a very smart player. The th third key I have to her, she's a big part of the penalty kill. And she's very good at being able to clear the pucks and get the pucks out of the zone. Absolutely. We even saw Tate Hutchinson get her body in the way of passing and shooting lanes. That kind of defense is going to win you games for Central Michigan. And one, and the last impact player for the Chippewas, we have three Schroer. Ten games played, she has a 9-1 record, 232 goals against average, 936 save percentage. She's second in the CCWHA in shutouts on the season, coming off of back-to-back -back shutouts versus Bowling Green and the first game against Aurora, where Central Michigan won 2 to nothing. Derek, what can you tell me about Bree? Yeah, Bree, she's second in the CCWHA in save percentage amongst goalies with at least three starts. So, you look at a couple of these goalies across the CCWHA, there's one for MSU and there's one for Lawrence Tech. I can't remember their names. They have one one game played, like, shutout win, whatever. So, Bree, amongst goalies with at least three starts this season, she's second in the CCWHA in save percentage. The only other one is far as far as for Sioux College. The third part I have for her is she has emerged as one of CMU's top goalie options, and she has improved time and time why, why Chris Haney trusts her as much as he does. We look forward to seeing Bree Schroer in that tonight tonight for Central Michigan in hopes of sweeping this weekend series. Taking a look at impact players for OSU. Allie Kasky in eight games that she's played. Three goals, nine assists for her 12 points. She's tied for the team lead in assists. This is a team that passes the puck a lot and again, creates those scoring chances for a lot of players. Allie Kasky had at least one point in every game coming into this weekend. And Allie Kasky, in terms of puck handling, she is one of the best, Derek. Yes, she is. He really is the second player to watch for we have for Ohio State. I decided to go with number 12, Avery White. Seven games played, one goal, nine assists for 10 points. Michael, she is on a tear this season. She Coming into this weekend, she scored at least one goal in every game. She's had two hat tricks, a four-goal game and a three-goal game. She has back-to-back -back seasons of at least 10 points. Michael, she needs six more points for back-to-back -back seasons of at least 20 points. That is very impressive. Avery White, a very, very good player. And she had a couple breakaway opportunities yesterday when Zoe Lawrence was in net for the Chippewas. So you know she'll be one of wanting to be coming back with a vengeance here today. Let's take a look at some keys to the game. Derek, what do you got for some keys today? First key to the game I got today, Michael, improved CMU power play. 0 for 18. You heard me right, 0 for 18 for your power play, including 0 for 16 against Aurora. And then you went 0 for 2 last night. 1 for 23 since the BGSU series back in early December. So that's my first key of the game. We were talking off air, Michael. I really think if there's one thing with this team that needs improvement going into the playoffs, it's this power play. The second thing, we're going back to your key of the game yesterday, outpace Ohio State. OSU is playing their third game in three days. How will the attrition start to set in for them? How will it start to set in for CMU. I think that's something that's going to come out big for Central Michigan today, is being able to use their speed to the advantage. They have some really fast skaters, but so does Ohio State, so that's something to keep an eye on. The third key to the game, I have get lower lines more active in the forecheck. We talked about it early in the pregame, where the lower lines for CMU has struggled in terms of scoring this season. Yeah, Annie Castor only getting the only goal on the third line yesterday. And Coach Chris Haney is actually going to be starting the third line. But first, taking a look at really quick scratches for tonight. Central Michigan has Grace Leotino, Declan Whitus, and Blankenstein here scratched for tonight. No scratches for OSU. We are just about ready to go. We'll step aside, but when we come back, starting lineups and puck drop coming right here at my Martin Ice Arena. Don't go anywhere.
for its first. For the visiting Ohio State Buckeyes, they're going to turn back to number 30, Savannah Sip, the freshman out of Omaha, Nebraska. In nine games, an 8-1 and one record, no overtime losses, two shutouts, a 129 goals against average, and a 938 save percentage. Doing on Canada. Can you turn the on ice? I'm really blurring in my headset. Down. They're all the way down. Why are they like blaring in my headset then? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Okay. Because I like barely can think with how loud they are. They're fine for me over here. Okay. And now for your starting goalies, finally presented by Optimex Sports. First, for the visiting Ohio State Buckeyes, they turn to number 30, Savannah Sip. In nine games, she has an 8 and 1 record, no overtime losses, two shutouts, 129 goals against average, and a 938 save percentage. Next, it's the Central Michigan Chippewas. They'll go to 25. Bree Schorer, the junior out of Essexville, Michigan, in 10 games, in one record, no overtime losses, three shutouts, 232 goals against average, and a 936 save percentage. Michael, why don't you give us the rest of the starting lineups? Absolutely, Derek. Starting lineups first for the Ohio State Buckeyes. They turn to Abby Cox, Abby McLaughlin, Colette Janik, Robin McCausland, and Phelan Brown Grant. For your Central Michigan Chippewas, they turn to, they're starting the third line today, Leah Palmer, Zoe Saudi, Allison Haney, Chloe Darche, and Brooke Hubert. Central Michigan will be starting the game off going from left to right, wearing their home white uniforms, maroon shorts, maroon rhetoric, yellow trim, white pants, maroon socks, and black buckets. Ohio State well, again, wear their scarlet tops with the black shoulders, black shorts, red pants, and black buckets. We have 20 minutes on the clock. Central Michigan's ready. Ohio State's ready. And we're underway. Here from our nice arena, Central Michigan wins the opening faceoff. Buck in the neutral zone. Now coming back to the offensive end. Puck trapped up at center ice. Taken by Brooke Hubert. Ahead for Saudi. Saudi falls down. Oh.
can you say this is a test? Test, test, one, two, check, check, one, two, test, test, one, two. Back inside Martin Ice Arena as Ohio State leading Central Michigan one to nothing after the first 20 minutes of play. Michael Rosencrans, Derek Steele with you on this Sunday afternoon in Mount Pleasant. Derek, taking a look at that first period, pretty much almost even in shots, 13 to 11 in favor of Central Michigan, but Ohio State getting the first tally. What does Central Michigan need to do to bounce back? Honestly, keep what you're doing. CMU has played, minus the couple of penalties, CMU has played a very clean first period, Michael. I'm really happy with what CMU has done in the first period. Keep pressuring Savannah Sip. The more shots you get on net, finally one's going to go into the back of the net. So if I'm head coach Chris Haney in that locker room, I'm just telling my team, keep doing what you're doing. You've played a really good 20 minutes so far. Not need to press, no need to press the panic button yet. Let's just keep playing our style of hockey. Nicole DeMarco getting that first tally on the board for Ohio State. Her 16th goal of the season, adding one more to her now 24-point campaign. She's been having a remarkable season. And Derek, one thing I've been noticing for Central Michigan is that they've been getting in a lot of board battles early, you know, bringing that physicality back to this game. And so far, there have been a, there's been a penalty with Zoe Bergen going off for that hit. But at the same time, Central Michigan is playing a very physical game. Just wondering, what are your thoughts on this physicality? Yeah, this is exactly what CMU wants to do there. They are going to be a little bit more on the physical side. So I really like, again, what they did in the first period. And Michael, it's like what you say to a shooter in basketball. If you have a really good three-point shooter and he's just having an off night, you're going to continue to tell him to shoot the basketball. Well, same thing in hockey. If you're having an off night shooting the puck, you just can't find the back of the net. You're going to tell your best scorers to continue shooting, and that's exactly what CMU needs to do in this period. Central Michigan looking to bounce back after an early tally by Ohio State. 
And 20 minutes are back on the clock as period two is underway. Brooke Hubert wins the faceoff for Central Michigan. And just as quick as that, the CMU power play <laughs> is now over with the final two seconds carrying over into the second period. Nothing will come of that. Darn, Michael, I really thought they could have done something in those two seconds. I guess I was wrong, but hey, five-on-five five hockey, that's where CMU has shined this weekend. Well, you know, it could have been a little face-off win from the draw, you know, shot from the blue line, it, Steve Eiserman style. Do you remember the shot? Um, This is going to haunt CMU fans. The shot Emma Lee had in overtime, game one against Sioux College last year. The blue line hit Shores water bottle, somehow knocks into the back of the net. Oh, they had a shot gosh. sort of like that. Yeah, it's definitely going to haunt some CMU fans, Derek. Oh, I know I'm going to get a hard time about that one this week. Ohio State shot there wide of net. Janik shot goes wide of net, looking to retrieve it for Ohio State. It's Riley Robinson. Tied up along the far corner. Abby Cox getting in there for the Buckeyes. Puck still tied up. Now comes loose out to Central Michigan. Man, Michael. I like Del Rey with speed. CMU has done a very good job of winning these board battles this weekend. Highly Del Rey looking to push the puck. Just couldn't get it. Colette Janik dumps it in for Ohio State. Tate Hutchinson to retrieve for Central Michigan. Kept in by the Buckeyes. Sydney DeMarco keeps it at the blue line. Pass ahead for Kylie Delray. Delray behind the defense. Delray in all alone. Just wide of the net. Holy smokes. What a huge break for Ohio State. I really think Savannah Sip was able to get her stick in there at the last second and poke that away. Really good job by Ohio State to be able to defend that breakaway. Another prime scoring opportunity for Central Michigan. You know Kylie Del Rey will want that one back, no doubt. And that's exactly what I'm talking about when I say continue to shoot. CMU has had countless opportunities to score the puck here tonight, but Savannah Sip doing a very good job in net for Ohio State. You continue to pressure her, she's going to slip up, and you're going to be able to capitalize on one of those opportunities. There's a shot saved by Schroer. 17.36 to go in the second period. Ohio State leads 1-0. Yeah, Michael, I think this is one of those games where it's very even scoring. I think it possibly could be whoever is able to capitalize next on an opportunity will win this game and will be able to walk away from this one. CMU has done a very good job. CMU has done a very good job of combating Ohio State's attacks here today. Puck comes free to Central Michigan. Stretch pass ahead couldn't be handled there by Zoe Bergen. Tried to stretch pass ahead to Abby Cox, couldn't handle it. Central Michigan back the other way. Zoe Bergen with speed. Tries to centering feed to nobody in particular. Ohio State picks it up. Puck still in Central Michigan's offensive end. And here's a little drop pass for Biankowski. It comes... I was free. There's a shot wide. Annie Caster to retrieve for Central Michigan. Swings it around the boards. Back for Biankowski. Biankowski looking for any help. Gets it to Leah Palmer. Leah Palmer. There's a shot. High slot. Save. It's loose in the rebound. Save by Savannah Sip. Another great scoring opportunity. Savannah Sip once again standing tall. I think I just saw Savannah Sip. Heart, heart, Savannah Sip's heart just drop into her stomach there, Michael. Her, you know that feeling when your stomach just falls? The holy cow, I have the puck, now I don't. Really good job for her to be able to regroup and jump onto that puck. Another really good shot for CMU, though. Face-off is won by Ohio State. Swing it around the end boards in their own trapezoid. Mac Barnett will try and retrieve for Central Michigan. Puck is loose. And it comes out to center ice. Puck played into the Central Michigan's defensive end. Tate Hutchinson retrieves, sends it back to neutral ice where Robbie McCausland gets it to Col Colette Janik. Now ahead to Nicole, Nicole DeMarco. There's a shot saved by Schroer. Shot blocked by traffic there. Colette Janik retrieves it for the Buckeyes. There's a shot blocker save by Schroer. Caitlin Williams retrieves it for Central Michigan. What I really like about Bree Schroer there is her, ooh. There's a big collision. Central Michigan fans wanting a penalty. Are they are not going to get one. 
first off, how are you not going to call that? Second off, I really like what Schroer's doing here today where she's rebounding or she's directing those rebounds into the corner because that's putting them out of harm's way. And there's a big hit on Caitlin Williams right in front of the PA booth by the stanchion. No call there either. There's referees, a shot wide of net. Referees letting them play today, I guess, Michael. Absolutely. Got a couple penalties in the first period, but the second period, yes, Derek, the officials are letting the women play. I don't think we'll ever beat the amount of penalties. Um, Nationals last year, it was a men's Division three game between Missouri and Missouri and Hope College. There was, between the two teams, 90-some-odd penalty minutes. Michael, I don't think we're going to get there today. I don't think so, but there is going to be a penalty coming up on Central Michigan as Brooke Hubert cross-checked Ohio State player into the boards, and Brooke Hubert is going to go to the box hey, for Central Michigan. Michael, you ready for this day in Chippewa's history? Absolutely. This day in Chippewa's history... We only will have to go back to last year as the penalty came at the 503 mark. 503 mark of the second period. We'll take it back to January 28th, 2023. The CMU women's hockey team went down to Farmington Hills Ice Arena, beat the Lawrence Tech Blue Devils 6 to 4. Thanks to four goals scored that evening by then freshman Gabriella Nixon. Goalie Lauren Abraham came up huge. And look at this a two on one develop. Going in shorthanded, save. Gabby Nixon tried to go on the backhand, couldn't get the couldn't get the puck to go. It was CMU's Lauren Abraham coming up big, getting the win for the women's team, getting one of two wins second semester last year. This has been this day in Chippewa's history. Mac Barnett fanned on that pass there, able to get it back to neutral ice where Ohio State will pass it up ahead to Abby McLaughlin. McLaughlin had that stolen from her by Tate Hutchinson. McCausland able to keep it in for the Buckeyes. McCausland at the blue line. Here's a shot high and wide of the net as that puck will get cleared down the length of the ice. Great job by Central Michigan. Just under a minute to go in their penalty kill. 13.50 to go in the second period. Yes, yeah, CMU's penalty kill today has been really solid, Michael. I know they gave up the one penalty or power play goal to Sydney DeMarco, or excuse me, Nicole DeMarco earlier this game. But overall, their penalty kill has been as good as advertised. Annie Caster gets a centering feed, and that was saved by Savannah Sip. Great scoring opportunity there for CMU, as there's going to be another penalty upcoming here. Nope, net came off its moorings. And folks, right now, we're going to let Derek step aside and we're going to bring in former men's division three goalie for Central Michigan, Mr. Joel Drucker. Joel, great to have you on the broadcast today. Man, it feels great to be back. I think this is my first one this year, if I'm not mistaken. How have you been liking what Central Michigan does so far as there's a shot wide in that? Well, relatively even game. I've There's not really too much to complain about as there was just a pretty big hit in the corner right, right at the blue line. But yeah, I mean, both. Both goalies seem to be playing well, even 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 in shots. I mean, this is a game. What more can you ask for? Absolutely. And talking really quick before you, just off air on the broadcast, you mentioned something really interesting, particularly about last night. Zoe Lawrence, the story of the night last night, getting her shutout. But as a former goalie yourself, you said that Zoe will fill in for you at practice whenever you're not able to go. And she's been able to play on a higher level. How's that been able to fare there? How's that been able to fare there for Zoe? So a little context for this little story. So I play on the Division II team currently right now at Central, but what's what usually happens is so I'm an education major, so I have to go to student teaching every now and then. And I have to get out of my practice early. So what, what we do is we bring in we bring in Lawrence to, you know, fill in for me when I have to go. So I'll get off the ice. Lawrence, you know, steps in for fills in for me when I'm gone. And I mean Getting any extra practice, no matter where you're at, it helps. I mean, as a goalie, you need all the all the practice you can get, and it helped with her when she filled in for me, and I fill in for them for the women's team whenever you know they need a they need a fill in, you know, in case you know Schroer goes down with an injury or can't make it to a practice, or Lawrence goes down with an injury and can't make it to a practice. So I mean, we fill in for each other, make sure we always have two goalies at a practice. It's fun. I mean, you feel like a part of the team, no matter what team you're on. You're playing for that night. I mean, when I go skate with the women's team, I mean they're they're awesome to skate with. I mean, yeah, it's a it's always a fun time. 
when you talk about establishing a forecheck here for Central Michigan in this game, it seems like a lot of the time Central Michigan just dumps it in, as you see there, and goes off for a line change. How do you think that they should be able to change that if they want to get on the board here today? Yeah, so what they're trying to do is they're trying to play a dump and chase kind of style games. So what happens is usually one of those players, typically on either end of the board, it doesn't matter what side, but they'll dump it in. Ideally, they're going to have, you know, they're going to dump it, puck goes around, they're going to get their change off, but they're going to, usually you'd want to leave one or two people on the ice, you know, to chase that puck in. And then, you know, once you get yourself established in the zone, then you can get those last two off, and then you've got your, your change pretty much all set to go. Is that puck staying in Ohio State's defensive end, able to get it out. Nicole DeMarco with it for Ohio State, looking for any help. Gets it to Gracie Kelleher. That shot played off by Leah Palmer. And Central Michigan will look to take it back the other way. Brooke Hubert dumps it in for Central Michigan as Savannah Sipp is going to freeze that one with 10 and a half minutes to go. Second period, Ohio State leads one to nothing. Yep. Like I said, even game so far, goalies are playing well. Not really seeing much action in terms of scoring, but I mean, this is this is a goaltending battle for sure. Central Michigan looking to get on the board after that early tally by Nicole DeMarco in the first period. Faceoff is loose. There's a shot from Biankowski saved by Sip. Yep, the quick faceoff shots that you usually that you see right there. Those are tough. Those are tough to stop as a goalie. I mean, because you know. There's a oh, shot in on goal, oh. loose on the rebound. It's still loose, and they say Savannah Sip has it. The one thing I will say about Sip's play right now, she has her eyes glued to that puck. I mean, I don't think she's lost track of it at least once this year, and that's super important. There's that's a... Savannah Sip's second time that that puck came into her glove, but she lost it for a brief moment, which only tells me one thing. That pressure, I think, is starting to set in for Central Michigan, and hopefully they can capitalize on it. Yeah, I mean, it, the more shots you put on a goalie, eventually one is going to go through. You just have to keep pounding away. Eventually, it's going to break. Eventually, they're going to break. Face-off won by Central Michigan. Stolen by Ohio State. Now here's Zoe Bergen. Centering feed. Good block in front by Ohio State. Zoe Bergen back to retrieve, trying to keep it in. Unable to. Ohio State clears it out to neutral ice. Central Michigan trying to get it back into their own offensive end. Here's Kylie Delray, rather Leah Palmer with it for Central Michigan. And we're going to get a stoppage in play here with 9.48 to go in the second period. I mean, right now we've got even game, like I've been saying all all broadcast long as I've been on. I mean, you can't really ask for, mu for much more than that. I mean... Fans, we want to remind you that the broadcast of today's game is a copyrighted presentation of the American Collegiate Hockey Association, the CMU Club, Ho Club Hockey Network, Moore Hall Television, and WMHW. No reproduction, retransmission, or any distribution of the descriptions or account of this game may take place without the express written consent of the ACHA, CCHN, MHTV, and WMHW. Ohio State trying to clear it out of Central's offensive end. They will. Tate Hutchinson back to retrieve for Central Michigan. Pass comes ahead to Noel Simbro. Noel Simbro racing for the puck with Colette Janik. Janik retrieves it for Ohio State. Collision along the boards there for Ohio State. So that shot was saved. Looked like the net came off its mooring there yes. for a second. And look out. Avery White behind the defense. White in all alone. Wide of the net. And that's another breakaway chance for Avery White. She's had... Four of them now over the weekend, two in each game. Yeah. Those breakaways, they can be very, very, very tricky to handle as a goalie because the shooter has, you know, all the time in the world. They control the pace of the breakaway. They can come in fast. They can come in slow. They can make you move to your left, your right. They have all. They have the total control of that entire situation. As a goalie, all you can really do is just react to what they do. And Avery White was a very, very fast skater. You see her going up and down the ice with blazing speed. And every time Avery White goes on a breakaway, it's almost it's almost certain in my mind that I thought she was going to get it there. But nonetheless, Bree Schroer standing tall. She's been playing a great game today. Yeah, Schroer has been great. I mean, she's been here now three years, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, I remember when she came in first. I was a sophomore. She was a freshman. 
So if, I'm a I'm a year older than her than her. So, but yeah, I mean, she's been great. You know, the whole time she's been here. I mean, just look at her numbers now; they're just unreal. Two thirty two goals against average and a nine thirty six safe percentage for Bree Trower coming into today's game. Those are some phenomenal numbers. And other than letting up that one goal, she's been playing outstanding here today. I mean, a little little nod to how goalie stats kind of work and how you can tell if a goalie is good. Anything above a nine hundred is usually is considered good. Above a nine like a nine ninety one, that's great. And ninety two a ninety two or above is just unreal. Huck came out to center ice for Central Michigan. Along the far side, that's Brooke Hubert with it. And she lost the puck trying to go past Ohio State. Leah Palmer retrieving for Central Michigan. Leah Palmer from a sharp angle high above the net. Kylie Del Rey retrieves for the Chippewas. Tied up along the boards by Sydney DeMarco. Here's a shot wide of net there by Gabby Lapore. As that puck comes out to neutral ice and will slowly roll down the length of the ice where Chloe Darche retrieves for the Chippewas. Now, Michael, I don't know if you're seeing this, but Ohio State right now has been playing a much, much tighter defensive game than they did last time. I mean, again, last game, they, you know, they lost four to nothing. So you can kind of see, like, you know, maybe there have been some defensive breakdowns in their play last time. But you don't, I'm not seeing any of that last in this game. Ohio State definitely doing a much better job of getting in the passing lanes and shooting lanes of Central Michigan, making it a difficult task. As here's a nifty move in all alone, save by Sip. Another great save by Sip right there. They have been, Central has been pounding away, but so far nothing seems to have been working. But I mean, like I said before, they just have to keep up that pressure. Eventually something is going to break. If not now, probably in the third period. Gabby Nixon tried to go on the backhand, made a couple of nice dekes, but Savannah Sip able to corral that one and freeze the puck for the Buckeyes. Just under eight and a half to go in the second period. one nothing Ohio State. Michael Rosencrantz joined by Joel Drucker in the broadcast booth. So glad that you could spend your Sunday afternoon with us on NFC Championship Weekend. Folks, later today, you don't want to miss it. Your Detroit Lions go into Santa Clara, California to take on the 49ers. It's going to be a fun game to watch, Joel. Oh, yeah, I'm excited for it. I've been, I'm a diehard Lions fan, man. As we say in... Uh... In our house, we're delusional Lions fans because we always get we always get excited, but we always get met with disappointment. You know, that is a great way to put it. Oh, look at that. There's a loose puck in front, just couldn't get it to go. Couple chances out right in front. Again, the centering passes in front are another incredibly difficult save so to Michigan, make. And that was a sharp angle. It's the crossbar. Wow. Oh my goodness, I thought they had scored, but it hit the crossbar much like last night. As there's another shot loose in front. Savannah Sip saves it, and Ohio State able to clear it to neutral ice. You cannot get many, many more chances better than that one. That is that is a heartbreaking sound to hear as a as a forward or a defenseman trying to trying to make take a shot on net. But as a goalie like me, it's your best friend, but I mean. I can understand their pain a little bit because I do play lacrosse as a midfielder and I have hit a couple posts in my time. <laughs> That's not a not a fun sound to hear if you're trying to score. <laughs> Central Michigan clearing it out of Ohio State's offensive end. Along the far side, Ohio State able to retrieve as it comes along the boards to Biankowski. Central Michigan applying great pressure on that four check, chasing, chasing back around the net. Here's Avery White, shot wide of net. Avery White will try again, tries a centering feed, won't be able to go as Central Michigan clears that out. And Colette Janik able to keep it in for Ohio State. Leah Palmer with it for Central Michigan. Pass too far ahead there for Mac Barnett as delayed offside as Ohio State has to touch up. And they do so successfully. What I'm, what I'm seeing in this game is everyone is moving the puck so well right now. Like, nobody seems to be panicking or kind of flinging it out in front. Uh-oh, here comes... Here's Nicole DeMarco, shot high. As I was saying, like, watch how everyone is moving the puck out there. Ohio State, CMU, doesn't matter who you're looking at. Nobody seems to be panicking so much. And like, there's not really many, you know, stupid passes that, as we would say in our... ND2, you know, where they would, you know, just randomly fling it right in front. 
or, you know, t- dump it all the way down from the opposite end. Central Michigan hesitated a little bit as they were in the middle of a line change. They are able to dump it in, but Ohio State was attempting to clear it. Now it's back into their defensive end as Ali Kasky now will get it for the Buckeyes. Pass ahead to center ice. Kept in there by Central Michigan. Again, a great forecheck being applied to, to OSU by CMU. Watch how they're moving. It's almost like a pincer maneuver. One person comes in from behind. The other one meets them as, they're, as, the, as the OSU player's coming out the other side. Here's given away. Caitlin Williams could not handle the puck at in the high slot. As Nicole DeMarco with speed for the Buckeyes. Tries a centering feed. Couldn't get to go. Colette Janik with it for the Buckeyes. There's, there's a shot saved in front. As Leah Palmer got a stick. Rather, Gally Lepore got a stick on it in front of Bree Schroer. Uh-oh. Here's a giveaway out. here. Good block out in front there by Central Michigan. Caitlin Williams attempts to clear it for Central Michigan. I don't know about you, Michael, but it kind of it's starting to look like that Ohio State's starting to tilt the ice in their favor right now. But just before it gets really bad, Central always seems to find a way to bring it back and kind of reset. Certainly hope Central Michigan can find a way here. Going into the third period, it will be tough if you're down one nothing. That'll keep tilting the momentum in favor of Ohio State. If you're Central Michigan, you want to try your best to get on the board as quick as you can, particularly before the third period if you have any opportunity for a good scoring chance but so far it's been all Ohio State in this second period shot as there's front. a shot stick saved by Schroer that shot came from Sydney DeMarco that's a good blocker save by Schroer blocker saves are usually the hardest saves for any goalie to make I know from experience I always particularly struggle with my low blocker so as do many other goalies and we'll get a stoppage in play here with 1.33 to go in the second period. That's going to do it for me. Derek is going to come back on. So well, Thank you very much for coming on, Joel. Always great to have you on the broadcast, and so glad to hear that you're continuing to do great things with hockey as well as lacrosse. Yep, finishing my last year. It's going to be a, it's going to be an awesome time, but I'm signing off, guys. Thanks for having me on. Thanks, CCHN, for bringing me back on. Now here is Derek Steele. I know I'm not as cool as Joel. I don't play hockey or lacrosse, but hey, I'm back. I just sit up here and talk and pretend like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> 13 to go in the second period. Central Michigan has it in Ohio State's defensive end looking for any scoring chances. That puck comes free to Avery White. Avery White, good job by Central Michigan to get back. Here's Avery White in on net. Steve by Bree Schroer. The rebound is loose. And they'll get a whistle on that. With the final 54 seconds to go in the second period, Ohio State leads 1-0. Could have been dangerous there, Derek. Holy smokes, Avery White is fast. That's now our, what, fifth fast break over the weekend? <laughs> One of these opportunities, Derek, I tell you. One I've... of these are eventually going to go in. But hey, if you're CMU, you're not complaining that any of them have not gone in yet. Puck cleared out by Central Michigan. Colette Janik gets it back into Central Michigan's defensive end. Here's Avery White again, shot high and wide. Janik retrieves for Ohio State. And now if you're CMU, there's about 32 seconds remaining on the clock. You do not want to give up a last-minute goal here. Those goals are the most back-breaking. Those very early in period or very late in period goals. Pass by Bienkowski as she fell down, able to dump it in, but Ohio State able to get it back. Avery White with it. Here's a shot in on goal. She scores. And on the sixth fast break, Avery White finally nets one home. Ohio State gets another late tally. Uh, second period as they're up 2-0. What did I say? One of those shots for Avery White. White is eventually going to go in. And if you're CMU, Michael... This is worst case scenario for you right now. Ohio State, Joel mentioned it. The ice is starting to tilt their way. The momentum's starting to go more and more their way. Last thing you wanted to do was go down two to nothing. But with that being said, we all know two to nothing lead, one of the most dangerous leads to keep in sports. So we'll have to see what happens for CMU in the third period. 
Ohio State able to get it into Central Michigan's defensive end. Palmer will ring it around the boards, but that is how the second period is going to end. After 40 minutes of hockey, Ohio State leads Central Michigan 2-0 after a late tally by Avery White. We'll step aside for now. Ohio State leads 2-0. Don't go anywhere. Third period action coming up next. You're listening to Central Michigan Women's Hockey on CCHN. And we're back. And we're back here inside Martin Ice Arena for the second intermission report presented by C Mish I, I, Women's Ice Hockey dot com. Ryan Donnelly here to give you the second intermission report. Current score: Ohio State to Central Michigan. Nothing. Taking a look goal by goal, we unfortunately could not give you a first intermission report. So we're going to give you Bert, uh, both goals in the first period in the 1332 mark it was Nicole DeMarco who notched in that first goal uh and in the second period at the 1951 mark about nine seconds left in the second period it was Abby White 
who was able to notch in that second goal for the Buckeyes. We got a very entertaining second or third period happening right now, but I want to talk about goaltending. Although Bree Schroer has given up two goals so far here in this game, she has been playing very good, filling in for Zoe Lawrence, who had a shutout last night, a 4 nothing shutout in her first career start. But I also want to talk about Savannah Zip. She, after coming back and he scored four goals on her last night, Savannah Zip has played wonderful tonight, and she by far has improved a lot. Impressive saves and impressive catches so far. We're expecting a lot out of both Schroer and Zip in the third period. Now, going through the I'm sorry, going through CMU hockey. Men's two lost to Northern Michigan this weekend, but they will get a shot to play him again at home here at Martin Ice Arena next weekend. Uh, four thirty warmups and five o'clock uh, puck drop on the ninth Super Bowl weekend, and on the tenth nine o'clock warmups and a nine thirty puck drop. John Gervasi will have the call for you on BlackHockey.com. All broadcasts will be free to watch, so make sure you go check out CMU Division Two men's ice hockey on all social medias on X and on Instagram. Men's D3 just, uh, played their series where they swept Illinois State, the Redbirds, this past weekend. They'll be playing the Northwood Timberwolves next week, February 2nd at 7 o'clock. Devin Sarah and Reagan Cleaves will have the call for you. And on February 3rd, Devin Sarah and myself will have the call for you at Northwood University. Taking a look now around the CCWHA, BGSU takes on Loyola. They took them on at 7.30 in the morning today after having a 9.30 puck drop last night. They have already played. If you would like to take a look, make sure you go to ccwha.com. Marysville will play Michigan State. Uh, they are currently playing right now. Uh, puck drop was at noon, so make sure you also tune in to their broadcast. And Notre Dame will be taking on Northern Michigan University. They are currently also going on. Puck drop dropped at 11.30 a.m. Take a look now at our Chippewa scoreboard. After a win last night against Western Michigan, they'll be set to play. They'll take on uh, Miami of Ohio in Miami of Ohio this Wednesday at 7 p.m. You can watch it on ESPN+. Plus. And also for the men's, another great win against the Western, Michi or Western Michigan Broncos. They won 62-55. Uh, to 55. They'll be back at the, at the barn on um, Broomfield at, on Tuesday at 7 p.m. You can also tune in on ESPN+. Plus, or if you're a student, you can go for free. Wrestling, they'll be playing at Southern Illinois University in Edwardsville uh, at 2 p.m. That should be happening right now. Uh, ESPN Plus, uh, you can tune into that. And if you want uh, more updates over the week uh, for any athletics, make sure you go to cmuchippewas.com or check any of the social media uh, for each team's. Taking a look now at our out-of-town scoreboards, the Grand Rapids Griffins last night got the win against the Belleville Center to 6-4. They uh, improved their record to 27-10 and 1. They'll be back this Friday against the Rockford Ice Hogs. Bob Kayser and Larry Fagierski will have the call for you on Wood Radio 1300, 106.9 FM, or on AHL TV. Saginaw Spirit took on the Kitchener Rangers, a 5-2 win, improving their record to 31-12 and 1. They'll be playing today at... 2 p.m. Uh, against Windsor. Dylan Clark will have the call for you on 100.5 WSGW or on CHL TV. The Detroit Red Wings took on the reigning Stanley Cup champions Las Vegas Golden Knights last night on a 5-2 win, improving their record without Patrick Kane to 26-18-5 last night. Also some news. The Red Wings brought up Billy Husso back up from Grand Rapids Griffins, so he will be back hopefully this week. Uh, on Wednesday, they'll be taking on the Ottawa Senators uh, after splitting the series right now 1-1. One one. They'll hopefully close out this series with a win. You could also... Uh, you could also watch the game on Bally Sports Detroit or on 97-1, the ticket. Well, it is AFC and NFC Championship weekend at 3, 3 o'clock. The Kansas City Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes, Taylor Swift, and Travis Kelsey will be marching in to M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland to take on Lamar Jackson, Zay Flowers, Patrick Queen, 
um, McCole Hartman and the Baltimore Ravens. Mark Andrews is expected to play today. And at 6.15, your Detroit Lions will be taking on the San Francisco 49ers. James Houston is expected to play today. Zach Ertz is also not expected to play today as well. Make sure you tune in 6.15 on Fox and CBS. Well, when we come back, Michael Rosencrantz and Derek Steele will have the call for you for the third period. So do not go anywhere. You're watching Women's Division Two Club Hockey here on CCHN.
I just burped. One. And we're back inside Martin Ice Arena. 2-0 Ohio State leads Central Michigan. Michael Rosencrantz and Derek Steele. Happy to have you on this Sunday afternoon NFC Championship weekend. But Derek, Central Michigan has given up a back-breaking goalie to Avery Wright White, who finally, after so many breakaways, gets one in the back of the cage past Bree Schroer. And for Central Michigan, what do they got to do to possibly swing this momentum back towards them? Honestly, Michael, keep doing what you did. Um, I really feel like CMU has played minus a couple of goals given up by Schroer. I honestly really have liked what CMU has done so far tonight. So just keep peppering sip and you'll eventually, hopefully, find a couple to go through for you. Williams lost the puck ahead for Ohio State. Avery White, again for the Buckeyes, going to retrieve that. Williams has it for Central Michigan. Show wheel and deal, pass it to Kylie Del Rey. Kylie Del Rey in the offensive zone, pass to Nixon. There's a shot by Kylie Del Rey, saved by Sip. Central Michigan trying to start out early with the scoring chances as that puck goes down the length of the ice. Icing will be negated. Kylie Del Rey retrieves the puck for Central Michigan, given away. There's a shot in on goal, saved by Schroer. And this is exactly what Central Michigan needs to do for the rest of the period. They need to be able to control puck possession. Really good save there with the chest by Bree Schroer. But they need to be able to tilt the ice back in their favor. Right now, as Joel mentioned late in the second period, right now it's kind of starting to tilt towards Ohio State. They got that late goal at the 1951 mark in the second period. So CMU needs to come out being the more aggressive team. Face off one by Ohio State, shot right off the draw. Won't go for Ali Kasky. There's another shot wide of goal. That was Sydney DeMarco trying to add her name to the scoring tally, unable to do so. Sydney DeMarco retrieves it for Ohio State, up ahead to Ali Kasky. Kasky. Kasky pinned up along the boards with Zoe Bergen, able to get it away. Nicole DeMarco intercepts the puck. Little board battle ensuing in the far corner. Able to get it out is Ohio State. There's a big hit along the near side boards. Nothing is going to come of that as Sidney DeMarco went down after the hit by Zoe Bergen. Zoe Bergen had, has had a couple of huge hits in the game. She had one earlier in the second period that got called for a check penalty. And then another really huge hit there by her. Given away by Ohio State. Zoe Bergen couldn't handle the puck as... Garche comes back in for Central Michigan. Here's a shot by Bergen, blocked it by in front by traffic. Tate Hutchinson sends the puck down low for Central Michigan. They're off the backhand of the rebound. Save by Sip. I really like what Annie Caster did there backdoor. She saw Sip was kind of leaning a little bit more towards the left side of the net. So she tried to hammer one in backdoor. And what you keep doing if you're a forward there, you keep slashing away at the puck until you hear the whistle. Because who knows, maybe they raise their pad. Maybe you can sneak one in. We saw Grower last year a couple of times give one up just like that. So really good play there by Annie Caster. Central Michigan able to contain the puck in their in their offensive end. Angramson re retrieved it for Ohio State. Now back up to Central Michigan. Puck goes down low as they try a centering feed. Wasn't able to get it off. I really like what CMU is doing with those centering feeds. We saw Saudi do it once, and I think it was Darche do it again. What they're trying to do is pit the puck right in front of Savannah Sip. Hit it at a point where it's point-blank range to try and get one past the goaltender. Brooke Hubert retrieves the puck for Central Michigan, looking for anybody in particular. Gets it off to Leah Palmer. Leah Palmer shot down low. It's loose in front of the net, and the rebound! Saved by Savannah Sip. Wow, another great save by the Ohio State goaltender. Exactly right again what I'm talking about. Continuously slash at it because it got loose under Sip, and if you keep hacking at it, eventually it's going to go in. Good job by Sip, though, to just kind of fall on it with her body. Make it lose out of the referee's vision to get it whistled dead. Savannah Sip has been playing lights out for Ohio State here today, saving all of the shots that have come her way so far in the first two periods of play for Central Michigan. Here's a centering feed, couldn't capitalize as Ohio State was there to block it. 
What Savannah Sip has done tonight, Michael, reminds me a lot of what Zoe Lawrence was doing last night, making the very fundamental saves, and then you sprinkle in some of the wow saves. Really good job by Savannah Sip, and it's been a goalie clinic this weekend between Savannah Sip, Zoe Lawrence, and now Bree Schroer. Riley Del Rey retrieves the puck for Central Michigan as she runs into her own teammate, loses the puck. Ohio State back up the other way with speed. That's Colette Janik. Janik shot in on goal, saved by Schroer. Another good save there by Schroer with the chest. Central Michigan looking for any sign of life in order to get on the board to try and make this a closer game here in the final 16 10 to go in the third period. Ohio State with a three on two developing. Here's a pass ahead. Good poke check away there as Gracie Kelleher could not handle the puck and couldn't get a shot off. There's a centering feed out in front. Zoe Bergen able to clear it. Bienkowski looking to retrieve for Central Michigan. Puck comes to Avery White. Rather, that is McCausland for Ohio State. Central Michigan able to retrieve Bienkowski with the puck for the Chippewas. Sends it down the length of the ice into OSU defensive end. Annie Caster going back to retrieve for Central Michigan. Ohio State able to clear it. Given away there by Ohio State. Riley Robinson looking to retrieve for the Buckeyes. Really good keep in there by Zoe Bergen. And those are the little nuances for Central Michigan that you have to do correctly if you want a chance to win this game. Another really good shot by Bergen in front of the net as well. Bergen tried to go on the backhand, couldn't get it to go as Sip was there to make the save. And Ohio State going back the other way, a little two-on-two. Two. Central Michigan has to get back. Annie Caster does get back. Bump it into Central Michigan's defensive end. Able to clear it, though, are the Chippewas. Aitlin Williams ahead with speed, a little one-on-three. There's a shot wide of net. Big hit along the boards along the near side. Ohio State able to clear it. Central Michigan back in their own defensive end. Kylie Delray with the puck. Central Michigan doing a good job of moving the puck. Just got to be able to get a good pass. There's a centering feed. Couldn't get it to go. Another really good centering feed there by Kylie Delray trying to find Gabriella Nixon. Just guarded very heavily by Ohio State. And I completely agree with what Joel said about Ohio State's defense, Michael. They came to play. They look angry here today. Ohio State has been playing tight defense. Oh, game, she scores! A loose puck on the rebound goes in. Central Michigan on the board, 2-1. to one. Kylie Delray, have yourself a series. Two games, four goals, three last night, one tonight. How about that for the brand-new alternate captain? Kylie Delray with the hat trick last night gets Central Michigan on the board. That is her 17th goal of the campaign, and what a big-time goal for Central Michigan as they look to turn this momentum ever back, ever so forward in their favor. Central Michigan has new life after that goal by Kylie Delray. If that puck would go the length of the ice, we get a stoppage in play. It's going to be a penalty coming up on Abby Cox going to the box two minutes for a trip. So we talked about the momentum, Michael, starting to slowly go towards Ohio State. Now we're starting to see it come back. Delray scoring in front of the net. What did I say all night about getting shots on Savannah Sip? Now Abby Cox is going to the bench or to the box, excuse me. So CMU is going to have a man advantage for the next two minutes. Central Michigan, this power play is ever so important in order to try and get them back into this game. Ohio State won the faceoff, couldn't clear the puck. Bienkowski behind the net. Here's a centering feed, couldn't be handled out in front. And a great keep in there by Leah Palmer for Central Michigan. As that puck comes to Ohio State, Central Michigan looking to retrieve. Ohio State looking to clear, and they do so. 136 to go in the power play, 13 and a half to go in the third period. Man, Michael, it would be huge for Central Michigan if they're able to capitalize on this power play. Kylie Delray with speed. Here's a shot at on goal wide. Leah Palmer able to keep it in but lost the puck as Ohio State has it. They dump it into Central Michigan's defensive end. 113 to go in the power play. 13.05 to go in the third period. Annie Caster loses the puck. And Ohio State will clear it again. 
Puck played by Bree Schroer as Mac Barnett goes back to get it for Central Michigan. Drops it off for Leah Palmer. Central Michigan need to get some offense going here, try and get a rush. As that puck was tipped in by Caitlin Williams, icing will be negated. Board battle along the far boards for the puck. Able to get back to Central Michigan. Here's a shot. Saved by Sip right out in front. And a good keep in there by Central Michigan. Tate Hutchinson drops it off to Annie Caster. Ahead for Saudi. Couldn't handle the puck. Comes back out to Central Ice. 25 seconds to go in the power play. Tate Hutchinson with it for the Chippewas. Drops it off for Biankowski. Tries to get it along the far boards. Ohio State able to clear. 13 seconds to go in the power play. And it looks like Central Michigan again, Derek, is going to be is going to be over on the power play. Can't buy a power play goal right now if you're Central Michigan. This is something, Michael, that has started to sneak into historic territories. Oh, for your last 21 power plays. Central Michigan unable to capitalize on the power play, but they do have momentum. And Central Michigan was looking to get this game tied at two. Has a good stick check out in front there. Just couldn't get it to go. Big hit along the boards. Tate Hutchinson with it for Central Michigan. And we're going to get a stoppage in play as Annie Caster was down for a little bit. And she is back up on her feet. Glad to see she's skating off on her own will, but she will go to the bench. I'll be interested to see who the... Are they going to call this four-on-four four hockey? Are they going to call coincidentals? Yes, they are. How are you going to call? Co I am sorry. How can you call coincidentals there? The hit by the Buckeyes. Williams coming in to defend her teammates. I do not understand, Michael, how you can call offsetting coincidentals there if you're the referees. Unless the officials thought that Williams' hit was retaliation, I did not see too much there. It was coming in. It's just a normal hit along the boards. You've let them play all game, and then you're going to start calling ticky-tack penalties like that? But nonetheless, this does, I would argue, give CMU an advantage because of the speed element, and it gives them a little bit more open ice with the 4-on-4. Four four. Face-off won by Central Michigan, dumped into OSU's defensive end. Ohio State able to retrieve it along the far side. Puck given away there by the Buckeyes. Now comes back to Ohio State. Going back up the other way with speed is Allie Kasky. Unable to get the shot off. Central Michigan able to stop her. Minute and a half to go in these coincidental minors for four-on-four four hockey as we'll get a stoppage in play here. They're waving someone else off. Are you sending Delray off? They're talking with the CMU bench. I saw the main referee by the CMU bench. No. I saw him wave someone off. No, it's going to stay 4-on-4 four four hockey. The referee I saw wave someone off. Because, yes, there's a player in the box. Who is that in the box? Is that Caster? That's Alyssa Gray in the box. I'm trying to see a number. That is Alyssa, Alyssa Gray. Gray. Penalty on Alyssa Gray there. That is mind baffling. So Ohio State has it. Four on three. Wow, huge break here for Ohio State. Let's see if they can capitalize. Ohio State has four on three as they're looking to add another tally on the afternoon. Here's a shot right in on front. It's loose in front. Where is it? A scramble out in front, and they'll blow the play dead. Save by Schroer. Surprised I didn't call that a good goal the way they've been calling this one today. Like Bree Schroer, able to Jeez. Horrible. That puck Not sent Gray team. off there. That makes Better zero sense. Sure. No, that third goal of the afternoon. Minutes Whatever, can you hit me back up, please? Period. Ohio State leads 2-1, to one, but looking to capitalize on the 4-on-3 as the faceoff is won by the Buckeyes. And if you're Ohio State, if you score here, you're starting to get the momentum in your way. You've gotten a couple of calls this period. Oh, what a save there by Schroer. Great save by Schroer. That puck came high up above her, and as soon as it came back down, made the decision to freeze the puck. That's a good save by Bree Schroer. But if you're Ohio State here, this is when you want to capitalize 4-on-3, 
You already have one power play goal on the afternoon. If you're able to get a second, Janik with the shot blocked on traffic. I would say you have a good shot of coming out of this game victorious. There's a shot from a sharp angle behind the net. Paulette Janik with it for Ohio State. 35 seconds to go in the coincidentals. Ohio State able to keep it in. Here's a shot in on goal. Loose out in front. Bree Trower calmly plays it with her stick. 9.45 to go in the third period. 20 seconds to go in the coincidentals. Kept in by Ohio State. Here's a shot right in on goal. Saved by Schroer. And Central Michigan able to clear it the length of the ice to get some pressure off of Bree Schroer. Huge clear there by Central Michigan. But the point I was going to bring up, the clock reads 9.25 remaining in regulation. So if you're head coach Chris Haney, you're already starting to run through a bunch of scenarios in your head. When do I pull Schroer? When do I add the extra attacker on the ice? If we go to a power play, do I make it a six on four? Like there's five or six different scenarios going on in head coach Chris Haney's mind right now. Don't forget, CMU still has their timeout as well. So I could see him calling a timeout to pull Schroer as well. Cole DeMarco with it for the Buckeyes. Skates over center ice into Central Michigan's defensive end. Great poke check. Able to get it away there from Nicole DeMarco. Here's a shot from an angle. And we're going to get a... And we're going to get a stoppage in play as the net came off its moorings there. That shot had a good look to it, Derek. I think that might have actually just hit Nicole DeMarco and went out. I think Nicole DeMarco was just acting as a second goalie there for CMU. Huge break for the chip was. Well, if Nicole DeMarco saved that shot for Bree Schroer, absolutely. Central Michigan will take that all day. Face-off won by Central Michigan. Important to win these face-offs going forward. Try and give yourself a chance. Central loses the puck, and we're going to get a stoppage in play as we're going to get a offsides call. With 8.41 to go, Ohio State leading 2-1. to one. In the third period of play, Nicole DeMarco digs in for the draw for Ohio State. Won by Central Michigan. Gabby Nixon has it. Drops it off in the defensive end for Palmer. Palmer, stretch pass ahead. Caitlin Williams. Caitlin Williams with speed. Here's a shot in on net. Saved by Sip. Off the top of the crossbar. Goes behind. Central Michigan keeps it in the offensive end. Shot blocked through traffic. Battle for the puck along the far boards. Ohio State has it, able to clear it. Leah Palmer has it for Central Michigan. Dumps it back into the offensive end. Caitlin Williams looking to retrieve for Central Michigan. Unable to do so as she goes down hard. Central fans wanting a penalty. They aren't going to get one. Stretch pass ahead to Mac Barnett. Off to G Gabby Nixon. Mix it on the backhand. Save by Sip. Great save by Savannah Sip. She's been playing lights out here today. Yeah, another great save by Savannah Sip. If you're Central Michigan, you're doing exactly what you need to do. 743 remaining in regulation. Don't hit the panic button quite yet, but your hand is spreading the hover over it just a tiny bit as time's starting to wind down. But I really like, Michael, what Central Michigan has done here all afternoon. Tate Hutchinson tied up with her number 17 counterpart, Lucy Vidmar. Central Michigan able to get it back into Ohio State's defensive end. Andy Caster coming in for Central Michigan, trying to retrieve the puck. Battle for it along the far boards. That comes out to Zoe Bergen. Zoe Bergen looking for a centering feed, unable to get it off. Here's it. Got saved by Sip, and look out a little bit of extracurriculars after the play, but nothing will come of that as they quickly fade. 7.07 to go in the third period, 2-1 to one Buckeyes. Yeah, I really like what Savannah Sip has done in this game, Michael. I've talked about how she's done a really good job of making the fundamental saves. And you know what? I know it sounds really easy. I know it does. But being in between the pipes, having everyone, all those eyes watching you, and then trying to stop what? These women are shooting the puck 60, 70, 80 miles per hour, if not a little bit slower, a little bit faster. Sometimes that's harder said than done. Central Michigan wins the faceoff but could not handle the puck as they'd have to go back and retrieve it in their own end. 
Avery White with it for the Buckeyes. Trying to get their third tally of the night. Unable to do so. Zoe Saudi has it for Central Michigan. Central Michigan looking to get their second goal of the afternoon that would tie this game up. Janik with it for Ohio State. Here's a centering feed. Good block out in front there, preventing Avery White from getting a premier scoring, premier scoring opportunity. Yeah, great poke check there by Central Michigan. Pass comes away. Brooke Hubert looking to retrieve for Central Michigan. Janik with it for the Buckeyes. Ohio State trying to clear it. The center ice they get to. Leah Palmer drops it off. Pass up ahead to Kylie Del Rey. Kylie Del Rey looking to provide that little offensive spark that Central Michigan needs in order to tie this game. Kelleher with it for the Buckeyes. Drops it off for Nicole DeMarco. DeMarco drops it, but stolen by Mac Barnett. Ohio State will dump it into Central's defensive end. 5.43 to go in the third period. 2-1, to one, Buckeyes over Central Michigan. Gabby Nixon along the far side. Into Ohio State zone. Great poke check. Able to get that puck away from Gabby Nixon. Were the Buckeyes. Pass comes ahead to Gabby Nixon as she dumps it in Ohio State's defensive end. Dolan puck here by... And he cast her on the backhand. And a save there by Sip. That puck comes free to Ohio State. Look out, a little one-on-one -on -one developing. There's a shot in on goal wide of net. The Sydney DeMarco briefly retrieved it for Ohio State. Puck comes loose. Kylie Del Rey. Stretch pass ahead to Gabby Nixon. Gabby Nixon in Central Michigan's offensive end, defensive end. Puck comes to Tate Hutchinson. Swings it down low. Caitlin Williams gets it back to Tate Hutchinson. Tate Hutchinson looking for an opportunity to go down low. Caitlin Williams swings it around behind the net for Gabby Nixon. Gabby Nixon right out in front. It's loose in front, cleared away by Ohio State. Just under four and a half minutes to go third period. Ohio State with numbers coming back up the other way. Taken in there by Lucy Vidmar, number 17 for Ohio State. And if you're Central Michigan, Derek, you don't want to give Ohio State this much time in your defensive end. You want to get your scoring chances yourself. Get this puck out of your own defensive end. Yes, but sometimes it's easier said than done, Michael. Ohio State's forecheck today, Michael, has done a really good job of keeping Central Michigan in their zone, something we've talked about yesterday. Another good save there by Shore, but something we've talked about yesterday is Ohio State not being able to get extended zone time. They have done a really good job of adjusting for that. But fans, just a reminder, while the women's team has next weekend off, the men's team will play against Northwood University. This series kick off, kicks off Friday night from right here at Modern Ice Arena. Devin Sarah and Michael Rosencrantz will have the call starting at 7.05 right here on CCHN, your home for Chippewa hockey. Final three and a half minutes coming up in the third period. Can Central Michigan tie this game up at two? Ohio State continuing to gain momentum. Avery White for the Buckeyes has a shot blocked in traffic. Simbro with it for the Chippewas. Noel Simbro looking to get the puck out of the defensive end. She will. Annie Caster. Would be given away there by the Buckeyes. And a shot blocked out in traffic. Given away there by Ohio State. Mac Barnett coming in. Here's a shot. Pass down low. It's loose in front. Rebound. Scoop. Tie game, 2-2, two, two, 3 one to go in the third. Let's go. Here we go. Who did I say was going to have a big game today? Tate Hutchinson. She has come up big time today for CMU. What a shot there. Even though it was Noel Simbro with the goal. Noel Simbro notching her first goal of the campaign. And what a big time to do it as this game is tied 2-2. Wow, Derek, that was electric. 
Face-off won by Ohio State. Zoe Saudi looking to retrieve it for Central Michigan. Into Ohio State's defensive end, Central Michigan. Ties the game 2-2 after Noel Simbro's first goal of the campaign. It was actually Annie Caster with the goal. So two games, two goals for Caster. Rather, that is Annie Caster. That is her second goal of the campaign. Central Michigan trying to keep it in their offensive end as there's a shot blocked by traffic out in front. Puck is loose. Down low and a save by Sip and... Savannah Sip making another great save. 2.23 to go. 2-2 tie here in the third. Holy smokes, Michael. We've got a hockey game here. What a great game. There's a reason this was the Hockey House game of the week. What a great series between two top contenders from Women's Division 2. Face-off won by Central Michigan. Then they keep the puck in their offensive end. Here's a little centering feed. Unable to get it to go. Ohio State clears it to center ice for Leah Palmer. Leah Palmer with it for Central Michigan, trying to look for anybody. Gets it to Caitlin Williams. She's tied up along the boards. Phelan Brown Grant with briefly with the puck, but stolen by Central Michigan. Brown Grant with the puck now for the Buckeyes. Central Michigan has got to get it out of their defensive zone as Ohio State dumps it right back in under two minutes to go in the third period. Good stretch pass ahead there for Caitlin Williams. Caitlin Williams into Ohio State's offense defensive end. Right behind the trapezoid as she goes hard into the boards. And we are going to have a penalty upcoming to Ohio State as we're going to get as we're going to get a little bit of extracurriculars after the play as tempers are starting to flare here. Late game dramatics. I know we're in a tied game, but just keep an eye on Bree Schroer. I have a gut feeling Michael, head coach Chris Haney, just has a couple tricks up his sleeve. CMU going up to the five on four penalty here as that's going to be Riley Robinson going to the box for Ohio State. No, Schroer's going to stay in that. Schroer will stay in net this power play. Ever so important. Face-off won by Ohio State. Buckeyes will attempt to clear it. Kept in by Tate Hutchinson. Download. Caitlin Williams. Here's his centering feed. Shot on goal. Saved by Sip. Rebound is loose. Ohio State able to come away with it. Caitlin Williams looking to retrieve for Central Michigan. Stolen by Gabby Nixon. Nixon on the shot. Saved by Sip. 2-2 tie. Central Michigan looking to take the lead. Here's a shot on goal. Saved by Sip. It's loose in front. And Savannah Sip is able to corral it. Just under a minute to go. 59 seconds in the third period. 2-2 tie. Yeah, he was calling a timeout. So let's see what head coach Chris Haney is drawing up here, folks. 2-2 game. Less than a minute left. Don't go anywhere. We're going to take one quick break. Do not touch that remote. We'll be back after this on CCHN. Two, one. 
Back here inside Martin Ice Arena, 2-2 tie. Central Michigan has tied it up off of Annie Caster's second goal of the campaign. Shots right now, 14-6 CMU in this period. Central Michigan applying a lot more pressure on Ohio State. Here's a centering feed. Loose in front, save by Sip. What a great save there by Sip. Her momentum was taking her to the left, was able to regroup, dive on the puck back to her right, Great job not giving up an easy back hit or uh, back to a goal there off a rebound. A 2 2 tie, one minute 19 left in the power play for Central Michigan. Central wins the face off. Central Michigan, a power play goal. The first in a big stretch. 3 2 Chippewas. Michael, you out. Billy Delray, let's go. 0 for 21 for your last power play. Make it 1 for 22. Riley Delray, number 18 on the campaign, gives Central the lead 3 to 2 in the final 46 seconds left to go in the game. Central Michigan has to hold for 46 seconds. Face off one by the Chippewas. And I will not be surprised if Ohio State, for a last ditch effort, will take out Savannah Sip. There she goes off the bench. It's there's a shot saved by Schroer. It's Savannah Sip off to the bench. Ohio State with the empty net. It will be six on five hockey in the final 35 seconds. What a huge goal there by Kylie Delray. Michael, I was about to point out that she had the puck, and I was going to say if there's one person you want to take the puck, it's going to be Kylie Delray. Ohio State is taking a timeout. We're going to stay right here with you. 35.7 seconds left. But what a huge shot by Kylie Delray, and we've said it all year. Big plays made by big players in key moments. None, No moment as big is too big for Kylie Delray. Less than a minute left, giving CMU the one goal lead. What a huge shift in momentum it's been for Central Michigan. Any time that you have a goal at the end of the period, it takes away a lot of your momentum. And for Central Michigan, they are able to turn the tides. Momentum is back in their favor. And now all they have to do is defend for 35 seconds to close out this game. Yes, but Ohio State's going six on five, so that's going to be easier said than done. But CMU penalty kill this this series has been very good for Central Michigan, so that's what they're basically treating this like is a penalty kill, trying to just get one down the length of the ice to seal this game. What can head coach Brian Shaw and the Buckeyes come up with here? Here's a shot blocked in front by traffic. Under 30 seconds to go in regulation. Puck cleared out by Central Michigan. Here's Biankowski for the empty net. She scores, and that's going to do it. Central Michigan will win this game 4-2 on the empty netter by Sandra Biankowski. <laughs> Smokes, Michael. What is there to be said about this game? But what I truly love about this game is it shows CMU can win these ugly games. It has not been a pretty game for the Chippewas, yet they're able to come out. 21 seconds remaining. You got to hold down the fort for 21 more seconds. But what a huge game for Central Michigan. Sandra Biankowski nets her fourth goal of the campaign on the empty netter. Zoe Saudi has it for Central Michigan. Pinned up along right in front of OSU's bench. Final six seconds to go in the third period. Central Michigan will play it back. Brooke goes the length of the ice, and the buzzer sounds in the third. Central Michigan completes the comeback, completes the, seat, the series sweep of Ohio State, and makes another big statement win. They win it 4-2. to two. Holy smokes, Michael, what a game. We'll break down this game and take one more quick look at the out-of-town scoreboard right after this break. Stay tuned. Postgame show brought to you by CMUWomensHockey.com. Coming up right after this break on CCHN, your home for Chippewa hockey.
nice high to move on. And we're back here inside Mart Nice Arena after a thrilling comeback victory by your Central Michigan Chippewas as they knock off the Ohio State Buckeyes and sweep the weekend series by a final of 4-2. to two. Derek, holy smokes. Holy what smokes, a comeback Michael. for this Central Michigan holy team. Smokes. And I was saying this to you off air, Michael. The reason why this is such a huge win for Central Michigan, down the stretch last year, these are games that they struggled in. The close games, the one and nothing, 2-1, 3-1 games, they constantly were finding themselves on the wrong side of those scores. So finally being able to get off over the hump, going down 2 to nothing into the third period, scoring, what was it, four goals in the third period to take the 4-2 win tonight. Not only is this a huge momentum boost for them, it's a huge confidence boost as well. So that says, hey, this is a really good Ohio State team we played. We can hang in with some of the best teams. This is a team we might very possibly see come March in St. Louis again. Absolutely. Ohio State played lights out today, primarily Savannah Sip. 37 on 40 saved from her. She played her heart out. Avery White sneaking in a goal on her sixth breakaway opportunity. She's been creating scoring chances all weekend long, and finally, Mets won <laughs> home there for the Buckeyes, but ultimately it fell just short. And one thing that I took away from the timeout, Derek, yep. it shows how much trust that Coach Chris Haney has in his squad. This is a really talented team we're talking about for Central Michigan. And what's really good about this team is it's very underclassmen heavy. You look at last year's team, there was eight freshmen last year, and now they're sophomore. You add in another eight or so freshman this year. So that's 16 out of, I think it's 21 or 22 possible skaters for Central Michigan. And then you start adding in players like a Mac Barnett. You add in a Leah Palmer. Um, another really good game from Noel Simbro today, scoring another key goal, or no, assisting on the caster goal, which ended up being the tying goal. So what's really cool, or what's a really good thing about this team is they have these young players for a while. So so this is a team that's not only going to be competitive this year, they're going to be competitive down the road as well. But going back to your point about head coach Chris Haney, what I really like about Chris Haney is his confidence he has in his team. And he really trusts his team and he trusts his players where he can draw up a play and they know that they can go out and execute the play. And execute they did, Derek. Central Michigan completes the comeback and gets another statement win over a clicking Ohio State team. 4-2. to two. Ohio State drops their second in a row to Central Michigan. Their only two losses coming to the Maroon and Gold. Central Michigan improves to 13-5, 0-0 on the year. And they will get a much-needed break before practice coming up tomorrow, I believe. Practice is tomorrow, but... It's going to be a very happy practice, and it's going to be a very happy locker room down there as we're having some of the players start coming up here. Man, Michael, I love seeing the post-game reactions from the players after a huge win like it is today. But taking a look at the impact players, Michael, uh, Kate Hutchinson, Bree Schroer, both of those players for Central Michigan coming up big here once again today. Absolutely. Kate Tate Hutchinson didn't really get her name on the scoring sheet, but again, she's one of those all-around players for Central Michigan. Uses her body a lot on defense, and that is a testament to how strong this team is defensively, and especially on the penalty kill, which has been rolling yep. much more than the power play. But on the power play, a much-needed goal from Kylie Del Rey in order to break that drought of the power play. Bree Schroer, what a game from Bree Schroer. She gave up two Two tough goals, especially one near the middle middle of the first period, but one at the end of the second was a very tough one to give if you're Bree Schroer, but able to stay relaxed in her crease and able to finish the job going forward for Central Yeah, Michigan. what's really good about Bree Schroer is she does a really good job of staying composed. She doesn't, I know I've, made this cliche a couple of times this weekend. She doesn't smack the panic button after giving up a goal. She's able to stay really calm in net, and she does a very good job of rebounding, and she does a very good job she does a very good job of regrouping and re 
refocusing yourself after giving up a goal. And one of the things that that was big in that third period is getting, again, that constant pressure on Savannah Sip. And fortunately for Central Michigan, she succumbed to that pressure. But Savannah Sip cannot counter out again. 37 on 40 save. She played her heart out today. She had a great game, Michael. And it's one for Ohio State. I'm going to compare this to the Aurora loss for CMU last weekend. That loss where you hung, just hung in there all game. You have the lead for majority of the game. CMU having a one nothing lead going into the third period last weekend. Ended up surrendering. Three goals to lose, three to one that day. But this loss for Ohio State feels a lot like it did for CMU last weekend against Aurora. But this is a really talented Ohio State team. And I would argue this is a team that can make noise in the CHE and in the Southeast region come Nationals, come tournament, playoff time. Ohio State will definitely be a force to be reckoned with. Stay tuned as more rankings come out. But speaking of Ohio State, let's take a look at their impact players. Today we had Allie Kasky, number 10, and Avery White for Ohio State. Derek, how they do? Yeah, Kask, both Kasky and White had really good games. The Avery White goal being the second goal for um Ohio State. And we talked about we talked about Avery White all weekend. It's just a matter of when is she gonna get the goal? When is she gonna get the goal? And finally she had that huge shot from a sharp angle, beating Bree Shore. Really good shot from her. But overall, great weekend series for Ohio State. I know two really tough losses, but you hung in there against one of the top teams. Taking a look at our three stars of the game. Third star of the game, give it to Savannah Sip. Again, 37 of 40 shots safe. She does get the loss, but she came up big this weekend, Derek. Yeah, Savannah Sip had a really great weekend this weekend for Ohio State. We've talked about her time and time again. And it's really hard today, Michael, to get our three stars of the game because there's a lot of different ways it could have gone. Sandra Biankowski, um, Annie Castor, who had the tie or the tying game, but Savannah Sip gained the third star. Who got the second star? Second star gave it to Avery White on her breakaway goal. Six breakaway chances for Avery White. And finally, on that sixth chance, she nets one home. Avery White is a very quick skater, very smart puck handler, yep. and she's going to be a player to watch for going forward for Ohio State. Completely agree. Avery White, very deserving of a star. Might have, should have been probably a star last night if it wasn't the Zoe Lawrence and Kylie Delray show, but another really good game from her. First star of the game goes to... None other than one of your leaders, Kylie Del Rey. Two goals on the night. It's the game-winning goal, putting the Central Michigan Central Michigan up three to two. Five goals in both games this weekend. Kylie Del Rey, have yourself a weekend. Have yourself a weekend. Have yourself a couple of weekends. Now that's three games straight for Kylie Del Del Rey having at least one goal. She scored the only goal against Aurora last Sunday. Now Patrick tonight, another two goals um today. Taking a look at the next upcoming games for both of for Central Michigan, they turn to Adrian February 10th. Central once again coming in at 13-5-0-0 versus Adrian at 9-3-0-0. Another tough squad that Central Michigan has on their hands. We got a 6:55 p.m. broadcast, 7:10 p.m. puck drop. And as for the men's, next week they host Northwood on Friday at 7:05 p.m. broadcast. 7.30 p.m. buck drop. Myself and Devin Sarah will be on the call for Friday's game. Derek, your final thoughts on today's game. Final thoughts of the game, man. Michael, what an ugly win this was. And I mean ugly in a very good way. Sometimes <laughs> sometimes you're not going to have the prettiest wins. Sometimes it doesn't go right for you. But hey, you know what? At the end of the day, a win's a win. You get two more points, and it leaps frogs you ahead of Lawrence Tech in the CCWHA standings. So unofficially, Central Michigan is sitting at second place, looking at only Sioux College ahead of them in the standings. Sioux College ahead of them, and a much-needed win for Central Michigan. And you know what? An ugly win indeed, but it was a comeback win. And hey, a win is a win. So a win is a win at the end of the day. We're taking that at CCHN, absolutely. And before we wrap up here today, we want to say a special thank you to More Hall Television for giving us all this equipment over the weekend, making sure that this equipment is consistent, running smoothly. We greatly appreciate all their help. Our camera op tonight was Trevor Wires. Thank you so much for all your help over this weekend, Trevor. Our producer today was Ryan Donnelly, who came in actually last night to help out with intermission reports last night and came back for the weekend. Thank you so much, Ryan. Our photographer today, 
He's not here, but Joe Grogan. He's not here. I was looking for him. I was just like, where'd he go? I think he went downstairs somewhere. All righty. And we want to give a thanks just everybody at CCHN for their hard work over the past weekend and all season. Your well, hard work certainly does not go unnoticed. One more big thank you to our status statistician, Joel Drucker, for helping track shots for us and keep us up to date on all that stuff. And a big more thank you. One more big thank you to all the fans who support us throughout the season. Thank you for constantly tuning in and being the reason why we're able to bring um CMU hockey to your screen. So big thank you to the viewers. It wouldn't be the Chippewa faithful without that constant support for the Maroon and Gold. Of we course. Thank you ever so much for that. And that's going to wrap things up here for Martin Ice Arena as the Central Michigan Chippewas complete the comeback, sweeping the weekend series against Ohio State with a final score of 4-2. to two. For my broadcast partner, Derek Steele, everybody else at CCHN, I'm Michael Rosencrantz saying thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, everybody.